Hello my friends, uh, this is Dr. Kazmi and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about uh, some tips uh, for the junior doctors who have just started their residency or their training in uh, the pediatric intensive care. Now one of the main issues in uh, pediatric intensive care is managing those children who have been put on mechanical ventilation for one reason or the other. Now, most of you know that when we put somebody on a mechanical uh, ventilator, we are taking over their uh, body physiology and we have to set, uh, set certain parameters which ensures that the uh, bodily functions are working at their optimum levels. And because those kids uh, who are put on a ventilator, majority of them are heavily sedated or they have been put to sleep, therefore, a clinical examination of these children doesn't give us much information so we have to rely on certain indicators and these are biochemical indicators and one of the indicators that we uh, very often look into on a very frequent basis is what we call as arterial blood gases now it depends you can do arterial blood gases if you've got an uh, arterial line or you can even go for venous blood gases but arterial is preferred over the cap gas or the venous gas now there are certain parameters in the uh, arterial blood gases which tell us whether the body physiology is in the right direction or not. And many times the issues that we come across uh, for those kids who are put on mechanical ventilation are issues with uh, uh, their oxygenation, that is maintaining their oxygen levels at an optimum level or we come across issues with ventilation when the, there are issues with the rising carbon dioxide levels or sometimes there can be a mixture of both like uh, where the oxygen levels are down the carbon dioxide levels are up and at the same time there can be a deranged physiology in the form of uh, acidosis or alkalosis so uh, we have got certain parameters which are shown on the screen of the mechanical ventilator and then there are certain things that uh, we get the information from the arterial blood gases so when we get this information the arterial blood gases and the uh, information uh, which is coming fr from the screen of a mechanical ventilation we can combine these together to form a plan so again as i said for junior doctors important things are to see most of the problems would either fall in issues with oxygenation in which the oxygen levels are down even the child who is on mechanical ventilator or there would be issues with ventilation in which there is primarily there is an issue with carbon dioxide rising carbon dioxide levels or there might be an issue with both so in very simple words how do we set different parameters to address these issues now to understand the basics of uh, mechanical ventilation i have already uh, uh, recorded a uh, lecture on the basics of mechanical ventilation you can see the link right here i've also put the link uh, down in the description section as well so do uh, check out that video to understand what are the basic terms that are used in uh, pediatric mechanical ventilation now having said that as i said again there could be three issues issues with the uh, oxygenation issues with ventilation or issues with both now if there is an issue with oxygenation where you find that a child who is mechanically ventilated the oxygen levels are still low in the blood then what you can do is you can play around with certain parameters to address that so how do we address uh, oxygenation very simple the first is what we call as the fraction of the inspired air FiO2 so FiO2 Normal FiO2 in, in room air is 21% because there's 21% oxygen in the, uh, in, the, in the normal room air and 79% nitrogen. So ideally, uh, you know, the, we should be keeping the FiO2 around 21%. But sometimes if it is not uh, enough to maintain the oxygen levels, we have to increase the FiO2. So if you increase the FiO2, what would happen? The oxygen levels in the blood would rise. So how do we increase the FiO2 levels? We grow in increments of 1 to 5. So you increase it by 5%. F, like for example, if somebody is on 25% FiO2, you would increase it to 30. If uh, still the oxygenation is not improving, you will improve it to 35 and so on and so forth. So the first thing is to play around with the FiO2. The other thing that can improve oxygenation is PEEP. 
which stands for peak uh, and expiratory pressure. So peak is usually set around 5 centimeters of water but you can increase in certain cases it might be around 7 to 8 or sometimes high peep could be around 10 to 12 centimeters of water. So peep is the pressure at the end of expiration and it keeps the alveoli open. So if you increase the peep, if the oxygenation, let's say, if you cannot increase the FiO2, you can increase the peep if not already increased. So you usually increase the peep in increments of one to two centimeter of water. So what the peep does when you increase the peep, there is more pressure at the end of expiration and that keeps the alveoli open. So when the alveoli are open, there is more functional residual volume and there is more space for the gaseous exchange. So the oxygen can go into the blood. So uh, the, uh, as I said, the other um, um, parameter that you can change to improve oxygenation is peak expiratory and expiratory pressure, which is known as peak. Or sometimes you can also increase the uh, inspiratory time uh, to increase the oxygenation level. Uh, but most of the times FiO2 and PEEP settings can improve the oxygenation level. Now coming to the uh, problems with ventilation. So ventilation means when you have done, an, uh, let's say, an arterial blood gas and the level of carbon dioxide is high. Now level of carbon dioxide in kilopascals should be around 4.5 to 6 or in uh, if you take the millimeters of uh, mercury then it should be not more than 45 so between 35 and 45 is the limit for uh, the uh, uh, level of uh, carbon dioxide in the blood so if the carbon dioxide level is high uh, obviously that can be because of respiratory acidosis or uh, uh, so in that condition what you can do to improve is that you have to blow off the carbon dioxide. So if the carbon dioxide levels are high, what you can do is you can increase the minute ventilation. So what is minute ventilation? Minute ventilation is the product of tidal volume times respiratory rate. In other words, normally we do not play around much with the tidal volume because tidal volume is already set. If you, if you increase the tidal volume too much, uh, you can cause barotrauma to the child who's already sedated and obviously can't complain what's happening. So you're all you're always at a loss because you don't know what's happening. So these are the parameters that would help you. So tidal volume is not changed much. So you are left with respiratory rate. So in simple words, if the uh, carbon dioxide levels are high, you have to increase the respiratory rate to blow off that carbon dioxide. If the carbon dioxide levels are low, then you have to decrease the respiratory rate to increase the carbon dioxide levels. So it's as simple as that. High carbon dioxide, increase the respiratory rate. Low carbon dioxide, decrease the uh, respiratory rate. The third condition uh, that a junior doctor can come across, uh, a child who is mechanically ventilated, is that he, do he, he does an arterial blood gas and finds that the oxygen level is low and carbon dioxide level is high or it could be reverse as well like where the oxygen level is higher carbon dioxide level is low which usually ha happens when you are doing aggressively uh, you know ventilating a child so in that case uh, there is one parameter by which you can set both in the opposite direction and that parameter is pip which stands for peak inspiratory pressure so if you increase the peak inspiratory pressure what would happen the oxygenation would improve the oxygen levels would rise, would go high, and the respiratory, uh, the the carbon dioxide levels will go down. If you decrease the positive inspiratory pressure, what would happen? The oxygen levels would go down, and carbon dioxide levels would go up. So simply, if you get a combination of high oxygen levels but low carbon dioxide, what would you do? You would decrease the PIP. So the decrease in the PIP would lead to a decrease in oxygen levels and an increase in carbon dioxide level and the physiology would come at a balance. If the carbon dioxide levels are high and the oxygen is low, then you have to increase the positive inspiratory pressure that would increase the carbon dioxide, uh, increase the oxygen levels and decrease the carbon dioxide level. Again, you will reach the normal physiology, uh, physiology parameters. So that is how you can address the issues either with oxygenation, either with ventilation or carbon dioxide problems, or a combination of both. So once again, to summarize that, 
If there is an issue with oxygenation, you play around with FiO2 or PEEP. If there is a problem with uh, elevated carbon or decreased carbon dioxide levels or in other words with uh, ventilation, play around with respiratory rate. If there is a problem with both, then play around with PIP, positive uh, inspiratory pressure. So I hope this explains how to address these uh, common problems uh, in a mechanically ventilated child who's been admitted in pediatric intensive care. If you've got any questions, any uh, queries, um, you can always ask me and um, you can ask me by putting your question in the comment section below and I will get back to you to answer your question. Thank you very much. Have a good day.